Matanistas, I am not match fit for once. Bit of a heavy one yesterday, travelling back from Belgrade with my trip to Saudi Arabia starting tomorrow for the Club World Cup. Anyway, sandwiched in between this, a home game against Crystal Palace in the league. Potential banana skin, just like Brentford, when we went to the World Cup last December, with virtually every City player going to the World Cup. So let's hope that doesn't repeat itself and City notch up a victory to put pressure on the leaders at the top of the league. Join me for today's match day vlog of Manchester City at home to Crystal Palace. So yes, I admit it, I got up feeling a bit rough today. So the vlog is going to take a slightly different order. It's going to be a quick one because I want to get the video out tonight on the day of the match. But we're going to do football first, food and analysis after the match. Right again. Yes. Go on, Bernie, get him. Well done. Oh, that's a bad pass. one-sided game and the goal did eventually come after 23 minutes. Foden won a fantastic layoff and what a fantastic run by Grealish. I think Roy is going to have to be a bit more inventive than his usual two banks of four and today his playing of five at the back when they're out of possession which let's face it is most of the time. But hang on, there's a VAR check for offside. This is taking a while, it must be really tight. So after a lengthy VAR check, the goal was given. It would have been a shame if it hadn't been, because that pass from Foden and that run from Grealish were really quite delicious. So we're 33 minutes in and Roy's answer to City going ahead is just more of the same. Not surprising, they'll try and stay in the game at 1-0 for as long as possible and I think a second goal will kill them off. Although to add to that, City are playing reasonably but there's not the spark that I was hoping for and the crowd's a bit flat today as well so let's hope we can get that second goal quickly and get the business done. <laughs> Half time, City won Palace nil. No half time pint today, I'm rationing my beer. I'm on an empty stomach or close to an empty stomach anyway, but what little beer I'm going to have is going to be pale ale or stout. Anyway, on to the match itself. I thought City basically had a stranglehold on the game for most of the first half. Palace could hardly get out. Very negatively set up with five at the back. 
And while City had some good chances with shots going narrowly wide, apart from the goal, that hasn't been enough on target for me. I can't remember the goalkeeper having to make a spectacular save or anything like that. I said the atmosphere's flat, it is. Maybe it's just because we're a week before Christmas, or maybe it's because we're in the middle of a Champions League game and a football cup. It's never so easy to break down these packed defences, and the key is always wins, I think. Although the goal did come from some intricate play in the middle. Very hard to pull that off and it was a great move that ended in a goal that was just about on side of me. And interestingly, even though I'd have expected Jack Wheelish and Kyle Walker to ride the win, Bosco Carniol has been popping up in a lot of interesting positions and advanced positions on both flanks. So I have a funny feeling, just as Guardiola invented this system with four centre-backs and stones popping into the midfield. I think he's got something brewing for the second half of the season involving Guardiol, or sorry, Guardiol, roaming around both wings. And Palace did have a bit of joy at the end of the half, always coming from long balls played onto runners. They were sort of hopeful long balls played into space, but they did get one opportunity and I think we were a little bit lucky from what we saw at our end that Edison didn't get more than a yellow for cleaning out the Palace attacker. Just a free kick on the edge of the box. Anyway, I'm starving. I'm going to try the dubious fare that's on offer in football stadiums, probably a pie. And let's hope City get that second goal, which will surely kill the match up. haven't made the substitution and they're uh, just offering more of the same. City just grinding this out, keeping the ball. Well, we did slacken off and loosen a bit there, and another of those long balls this time found its man. I thought the danger had been averted, but the attacker managed to turn and get a crossover and beat Nathan Ake to it. So, is this going to be a sweaty 15 minutes? any time to recover from that. This is a disaster, this is.
Well, Matanesis, that was bad, really bad. Reminded me of the game against Brentford last season, just before the World Cup. Players' minds elsewhere, loads and loads of individual errors. Anyway, I didn't bring you any food at the start of the video, but I have time now at the end of the video to take you around some of Manchester's Christmas market stalls. It's something we've copied from Germany, really, but last time I tried this, there was a huge variety of things available. I think I had a Venezuelan Arapa last time. Some of the stalls are here all year round, but there are a lot more open for Christmas. Okay, Matanistas, I promise you some food and food I have got. And I'm trying something that I have never ever tried before. I've had Brazilian barbecues where they bring all the shaved meats round and they have like a Western style buffet to start with. But really, Brazilian food is a big unknown to me. And at the market, happily, there is a stand selling Brazilian food. And I have gone for a dish called a carajé. I checked it out before I bought it. It is authentically Brazilian and it's made from ingredients that you'd normally associate from West Africa, which is indeed where the dish originated. However, the Brazilian version is slightly different. Hello. Pretty good. The carbs are very heavy and the peas are very heavy, so I think this might fill me even though it looks like a small portion. Time to check the shrimp out. I guess they're probably not the best you could possibly get in a market in the middle of an inland city. And the fritter. No, eight, no. It doesn't taste of much. Very, very doughy. Right, Metanistas, a little bonus for you. That didn't satisfy me. So I've gone for some Korean fried chicken. It's become very popular of late. I'm not sure how much I'm going to like it since I'm not a fried chicken man, but there was lots of variety around this market. I thought, well, not had it before. Let's give it a try. So not too complicated a dish. It did come with a Glasgow salad or chips, if you don't know what that is, but I just wanted the chicken. I'd only need a little bit more. Again, expensive at £10, although that would have included the chips had I wanted them. I had a choice of barbecue sauce or gochugang, which is spicy but a little bit sweet as well. Quite pleasant, more like finger food with a beer. Unfortunately, I'm not having a beer here. Uh, yeah, I'd have this again, I'd say. And as for the spice level, it's pleasantly spicy, although personally, I prefer it to be spicier. Anyway, Matanistas, that is definitely the end of the food segment. Since I don't know what time my train is, we'll have a pint at the Piccadilly Tap and talk about the game. Right, Matanistas, before we pick the bones out of that, I'm on a Baba Ganoush coffee and whiskey porter. I'm at the Piccadilly Tap again. I'm not sure I like the idea of the whiskey, but I've never had this before, so worth a try. It's smooth, I like the coffee notes, but the added taste of whiskey doesn't do it for me. It's still a reasonable pint, and a lot of people will find it actually to their taste. Now, as for the match, I was a bit worried it would be something similar to what happened against Brentford last season, and it proved to be that we were seemingly strolling to a win at 2-0 up. Two of three VAR offside checks going our way, and the attacking looked OK, but could have been sharper. The match could have been killed off well before then, although I thought 2-0 was enough to kill Palace off. Very bad individual errors people with their heads somewhere else thinking of the trip to the World Club Cup surely. 
and not enough impetus. I think Guardiola has to take some of the blame. Again, there should have been more substitutions when he saw Palace actually started to have a go and started to press. And one of my subscribers, Nick, has joined me in the pub. Delighted to see me. I'm delighted to see him. And I'm going to ask his views on the game. Disappointed. Um, I just think at 2-0 up, we should have absolutely killed the game off. We didn't. We look, we're, we're, we're missing a spark at the moment. I don't know what it is, but I, I, I just think Doku absent, De Bruyne absent. And should Guardiola have made substitutions at 2-0 up? I wish he would have, because we were absolutely uninspired. As soon as you want 2 0, 2 1 down, I, 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 I feared the worst. So, yes, some of that was most definitely on Guardiola, I think, not making any substitutions. And individual errors did creep in. Diaz, I thought, actually managed to shepherd the Palace attacker away from goal when he did actually latch onto one of those long balls that Palace were playing all afternoon. Yet he allowed himself to be turned and goal side as well. And then Ake couldn't keep up with his man. That was 2 1. And then when five minutes of injury time were added, I thought, well, we will just play this out and pass the ball around. Foden played way too ambitious a ball gave possession away and he was then the man who lunged in at the end and gave that penalty away so lots of unsatisfactory things there Matanistas but we move on next game will be in Saudi Arabia at the World Club Cup a bit different no quick slurps no pints of beer no glasses of wine there of course but I'm sure it'll be interesting anyway but until then I'm going to love you and leave you folks please remember keep liking which is very important because it moves my videos up the algorithm keep subscribing keep sharing keep telling all your friends about me but most of all don't forget you can't beat a bit of mutton